Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. So we have a bit of a different idea this week and it's actually Glenn's idea so I'm going to let him introduce it. Yeah so we have our upcoming games list as per usual. We're going to use the tier maker program to rank them accordingly. Which has never been done before. So uh, get ready for something totally original. What do you mean everyone else is bloody hell? Let's get on with it. So as you can see, we have the 10 games coming out this week. Yeah, it seems to be another average week. That being said, we still have an S rank on there. The first one up then is the interesting looking Gravity Duck. This looks very by the numbers. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? Because they released a game a couple of weeks ago called Siberian for a very similar price, which was a very decent game. And this just seems to be another step back again, isn't it? It's very scattergun in terms of what they release. So where are we going to put this one then? We've got S, A, B, C, is it going in the D rank straight away? I'm not enthralled by it, are you? You wanna play a bit of Gravity Duck? Is it ever, has anyone ever said those words ever? D rank, make it so. Nice one. Okay, what should we pick out next? Let's go for Friday the 13th, which you've just reviewed. This looked okay, the performance wasn't perfect. Had I not just reviewed this game, this would have probably been an S rank. But having just reviewed it, don't get me wrong, it's a good game, it's fun, but the single player is lacklustre, and uh, if it doesn't pick up multiplayer wise, if not enough people buy it, it's gonna suffer for it. Middle of the road, I reckon. B. B. Yeah, it's exactly that. It's all about the online for this one. If the online doesn't work, as has been the case with so many Switch games, it's just going to be a disaster. B rank. Right, the next one, let's pick out this Escape the Universe, which is a side-scrolling shoot 'em up maybe in the style of a R-Type, with an interesting art style to it as well. It looks okay, and um, the art style is certainly different. It's just there are so many good shooters on the Switch that you've got to really be something special to stand out now, and this doesn't stand out. It does have some interesting elements. I mean, it looks like you leave your spaceship at times and you proceed on foot with that top-down perspective. But it's not wowing me. There are so many good shmups on the Switch. It takes a lot, to be honest. It's a nice price. It's an interesting art style. I'm not excited for this one. For me, this is going to be probably a C. Yeah, I think it fits between the two games we've already mentioned quite well, doesn't it? So I would say C is fair. In a global massacre. Only those who escaped into space managed to survive. In this empty, hopeless world, everyone dreams of. Right, next then we've got Ittle Jew. So obviously the sequel has been on the Switch already. This one's releasing this week and it's releasing for a fairly decent price as well. It's going for $8.99, I'm assuming about $10 euros. So this is quite a simplified top-down adventure game. It says in the description itself that they've boiled it right down to very basic mechanics. So it's whether you like that idea or whether you like a bit more for your adventure games. Yeah, I've never played these. I know you've got the second one. I love this art style, I must admit. This is a bit of me and I do like it when games are simplified down to just being fun yeah i make you right i like that idea that simple doesn't have to mean rubbish do you know what i mean there's nothing wrong with playing a simple game doesn't mean that your gamer card gets taken off you does it you know <laughs> i don't know what do you reckon a b or are you thinking higher probably a b for this one for me to be honest
So the next one is called Cryo Gear, published by Polarity Flow, and it's another side-scrolling Metroidvania with pixel art. Eesh. Yeah, when we first looked at this one, it reminded me a little bit of a Commodore 64 game, especially with the music. It doesn't do anything wrong, it just doesn't do anything new. By the description, you've got the full-scale RPG inventory, there's boss fights, there's everything you'd expect from a Metroidvania. There's just so many of them. I actually like the visual style of this one. I'd put this maybe C. B? What do we reckon? It's that price, isn't it? £15.79 and whatever the regional equivalent is. You could get the Mummy Demastered for that sort of price, and that was a good game. That was a very good game. Yeah, C. I reckon a C. Alright then, so hopefully we're getting some decent choices now. We've got the, Vis what is it, the Visara Shmup Collection. Now I've actually had a little go of this one. They're nice games, a lot like the hamster games where you can put coins in using the R button. Yeah, so I think I'm right in saying these games came out in the early 2000s. So unless I'm wrong, I may be wrong, but I think this is the first time they've seen a release outside of Japan. And I also think I'm right in saying that um, Strictly Limited Games are going to do a print run for this as well. Going for a very decent price of 8 99 but there's also 50% off at launch as well. I think relative to the rest of the releases this week, I think A is fair, isn't it, would you say? Yeah, definitely. Next up, we've got a game called Fell Seal Arbiter's Mark, and I believe the Flannel Fox has reviewed this one. Maybe go check out his review of it. There are a few good tactical turn-based RPGs on the Switch, the Disguise series, Mercenaries, and also I think there was one called Regalia of Men and Monarchs or something. This looks to have, I, I love this art style. I think this looks really nice. I love the backgrounds, really does look striking. And also there was a game out last week, a tactical RPG called Tactics 5, which was a very interesting art style in itself. Um, almost looked like a, a souped up Spectrum game. Very similar price, 20 odd pounds. And that one interested me more than this does. It looks like this shares some of the same mechanics of the Banner Saga series. So when you went into the turn-based combat, you know, so you could see the order at the top of the screen, that worked quite nicely. I'm quite intrigued by this, to be honest. I'm going to go and check out the rest of Flannel Fox's review. I would put this maybe around about the B. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think B's fair. It would certainly not an A for me anyway. Okay, right, so that takes us on to the next one, which is a game called Exception. A bit of a platform come 3D twist. Yeah, it's a combat platformer. Looks interesting. There's a mechanic where it kind of shifts to 3D for a second before putting you into the next part of the stage. It reminded me a little bit of the uh, Shinobi remake that they did for the 3DS. But as Mark said, it has this quite interesting perspective uh, shifting mechanic. Yeah, I'm not sure how that would work, but it definitely looks interesting. It's one of the more interesting releases for the week, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say so. I think it's probably, in terms of the grand scheme of things, a middle of the road entry. I would say B, to be honest, yeah. Okay, the next game is Never Give Up, which is essentially Super Meat Boy. 
Now I could be wrong about this, but I believe it was originally an online flash based game series that they've made into a fully fledged game. Now I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I read something about that yesterday. This is essentially a super meat boy clone with an interesting mechanic whereby you can give up and move on to the next stage. Now why would you give up? You might ask yourself, well, each stage is actually seven progressively more difficult versions of the same level. So you might get up to level six and just be fed up with that. As long as you finish that first room, then you can move on. 12 pound, hmm, a little bit on the pricier side for this market, but I actually really enjoy this game. It, I did play a bit of it and yeah, it was good. For what it wanted to do and for what it wants to be, it did it very well, but yeah, I think A is fair. person would be entertained by this. YOLO! <laughs> I hate myself. Right, next up is Rogue Singularity, which is a 3D, supposedly infinite obstacle course. I don't see how you can have a procedurally generated 3D platformer. The point of those games was learning them well and getting better because of it. That kind of misses the point of it completely for me. In terms of the, the game, we had a quick look at the trailer. It reminded me a little bit of the uh, challenge sections in Super Mario Sunshine. Any of you remember those? But if it's procedurally generated, I don't see the point. I, you, you're meant to learn the level and get better at it through that. Uh, no, not for me. I think for me, this is going to be what? Maybe a C? Be kind? It's not Gravity Ducks, is it? <laughs> Let's be honest. So yeah, whichever the next one up from that is. Yeah, there we are. The last game is Beholder 2 coming this week, and the first one is out on the Switch as well. This is by far the most interesting title to me. I love my adventure series. I quite like my sim series. Is this some sort of adventure sim hybrid? I don't know how it works, whether you have a work system where you have to go to work each day. Yeah, again, just by looking at the eShop, it looks like you have to manage your time in your day, so you would have to go to certain jobs or certain roles during the day. You've got money up there. It just looks interesting, to be honest. What do we reckon? It's still not an S rank. Yeah, no. No S ranks this week, so A rank, I would say, for this one. Okay, so at the bottom of our list, we've got Gravity Ducks looking a bit sad down there. Might be a good game, who knows. Then in the C category, we've got Escape the Universe, Cryo Gear, and Rogue Singularity. Up in the Bs, we've got Friday the 13th, which, look, if it gets a good online following, it's going to be a great game. It will do, fail, seal, and exception. And then who are our top dogs, Glenn? So we've got the Fasara Collection, we've got Never Give Up, and we have Beholder 2. I just want to reiterate what Mark's just said, because he's bang on. Friday the 13th is not a B game as long as people buy it and as long as there's a, a good online community. If that happens and people can stomach the price, which is maybe a little bit too high, that game is a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this slightly new formula. We just get, you know, we don't want to get bored. And if we get bored, then the video is going to be boring. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Let us know down in the comments. If you didn't, be honest, whatever. But all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Yeah, nice one. Just a quick thank you to our Patreons for your continued support. Four more Patreons to 60, which is absolutely fantastic. If you want to be one of those, the links will be down below. Take it easy, and until next time, happy gaming. See ya!